India is now the world's biggest smartphone manufacturer after China. And in its next step to make the country a global hub for electronics production, the government has approved a $10 billion incentive package to semiconductor and display manufacturers. The government announced it will provide support of up to 50% of the project cost to eligible companies. The center also said it will work closely with state governments to provide the right infrastructure for fabrication plants. India currently imports 100% of its semiconductors, spending about $24 billion annually. Now, the plan is to make India self-sufficient in production of semiconductor chips that go into phones, computers, cars, and everyday electronics such as washing machines, TVs, and refrigerators. It all comes at a time when tech companies and automakers around the world are grappling with chip shortages. Despite strong demand, Indian car makers are estimated to lose sales of 5 lakh units in FY22 due to chip shortage, according to ICRA. Ironically, India is a leading chip designer with 25,000 engineers working in this field. Our semiconductor design market was worth more than $33 billion in 2020. The new incentive package includes support to homegrown chip product design companies. The semiconductor industry is an extremely concentrated one both in terms of companies and the countries. Just top three companies, Intel, Samsung and TSMC made $188 billion in revenue in 2020, as much as the next 12 largest chip makers combined. When it comes to the foundry business, TSMC's home country Taiwan alone accounted for 63% of the total global foundry market share in 2020, followed by South Korea at 18% and China at 6%. The chip supply crisis that began after the pandemic highlighted our reliance on Taiwan and China. Geopolitical factors are also pushing India to reduce its dependence on Beijing. While the domestic opportunity is huge, making semiconductors is a complex process. It takes hundreds of precisely controlled steps over several months to make a chip. Qualcomm India President Rajan Vagadia gives us a sense of the complexities behind setting up a fabrication unit. The market is huge. The opportunities are huge. I would say when we look at the fab and we look at it as not one activity, which is the fab itself. There, is, there are quite a few things that come before the fab and after the fab. So it's actually a set of activities and the fab happens to be one of the activities. I think the market is perfectly there for India. Now, if you pick up that one piece, which is called the fab fab, you need a lot of infrastructure requirements, which are very stringent. I would say we need also that infrastructure to be in place where it's not just about land. It's about power, stable power. It's about availability of inert gases, availability of chemicals, availability of right transport. I would say we need to look at all of those aspects and then take a conscious call as a country where you want to start. You can start anywhere. Every piece has its own nuances. And as far as we want to look at the nuances and take a, a responsible call on it, that's perfectly fine. If some, you were to ask me personally, I would say the R&D of the semiconductor is probably more key to start with. India's previous attempts to attract chip makers in 2017 and 2020 had failed. In 2007, Intel had shown interest but moved to China and Vietnam instead because the government's policy in India and incentives were not thought through. In 2013, the government approved two proposals by JP Group and HSMC with a promise to subsidize the project cost, but the projects failed to take off as they could not attract investors. We spoke with Rajiv Kushu, Chairman of India Electronics and Semiconductor Association, to understand what impact the new scheme will have. The whole story started way back in 2012, 11, 12 time frame. And there were a lot of incentives and packages um, given at that point of time. But then none of them were basically comprehensive. You see, this policy does not leave any loopholes. It covers design. It covers manufacturing of semiconductors. It covers even packaging of semiconductors. I won't be surprised within a month there will be announcements of at least two uh, semiconductor fabs and two display fabs. So incentive definitely plays an important role. But apart from that, there are other things which play an important role, which is power, 
infrastructure and proximity to uh, to the airport and uh, and what is important here whenever you have a semiconductor fab in the country or an osat in the factory uh, osat in the country it does not uh, it does not see india only as a market it sees the global market so you need to have really quick turnaround time see those are important things but you must appreciate in last uh, so since 2012 there has been a huge investment in the number of airports we have in the country in the number of highways we have so i think we are much better equipped today compared mm. to 10 years back mm. uh, in terms of uh, in, ter in terms of the infrastructure water um, the availability of water and availability of uh, uh, the road infrastructure and talent as well it takes years and costs upwards of 5 billion dollars to set up a fabrication unit factories of companies like samsung and tsmc cost over 20 billion dollars each they require continuous power supply as they run 24/7 moreover an entry level factory consumes more than 20 million liters of ultra pure water per day chip manufacturing companies require a pollution free environment and very clean rooms even a single speck of dust can compromise a chip costing millions of dollars india can find early success in outsourced semiconductor assembly and testing or osat an osat plant packages assembles and tests foundry made silicon wafers this is what the tata group is reportedly planning to set up at a cost of 300 million dollars to establish autonomy in the entire semiconductor value chain which includes designing fabrication and testing and assembly india must promise the right infrastructure apart from the financial incentives it will take a lot of effort like finding the right spots for factories and coordination with states for uninterrupted water and power supply If you like this video share it and subscribe to Business Standard for more news views and insights log on to www.business-standard.com do also follow us on YouTube Twitter Facebook Instagram Telegram and LinkedIn